This episode of the Soupcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the Coffee and Q, the Smoked, the Two Border, and the Discord. You can't go wrong with any of the great seasonings that is over at the MedCanadianBBQ.com. While you're there, be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. McKinney Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the SLOOPCAST also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company, who is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned coffee company. Uh, all of their coffee is world class hand roasted micro batch coffee. Uh, once again, it is roast to order. It's not sitting around on a shelf. It's not sitting around in a bin. It's not sitting around in the back room of a grocery store for weeks or whatever on end. No. First, you order it, then it is roasted, then it is shipped to you. This ensures you're getting the freshest possible coffee for your coffee dollar. Uh, They have an amazing selection of coffees, all of them fair trade certified, all of them USDA organic. Integrity is a core value of what they do, and it shows in their coffee. You can find all of their coffees at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? This is our private YouTube conversation time. We've been getting new listeners. Um, I think some of you are confused about why we dawdle at the beginning of the at the beginning of the show it's because this is if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast this is where the music would be but youtube doesn't like music they hate music it's a it's a very anti-music platform so i have a quick gripe and i feel like it's it's a great thing like this is a real like grind my gears it's great for the secret portion of the show okay you know people always complain that christmas stuff shows up in the stores earlier and earlier every year Mm-hmm. Oktoberfest all yep. over the damn stores. Yep. So that started last weekend. Oh, yeah. This, this, this isn't this is not fresh today. This is this has been happening for at least a week or two already. Now, people are like, oh, it's only September. That Well, I, technically, Oktoberfest is in in like the end of September. It's technically starts in September. Um but when we we're now venturing into the beginning of or at least the middle of August and guys, it's I, I'm, I, I say this as I obviously bought and am currently drinking one, but I still like my hazy IPAs, my my like real juicy summery hazy IPAs, and I don't want those to go away yet. So slow down. Too soon. Too soon. All right, let's get into today's episode, Jared. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloop Guest. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? You know, Kyle, it was a it was a sunny day. It was a stylish day. And all, it's just I'm, I'm real committed to this episode right now. And if you all want to read between those lines, you go right ahead. <laughs> but, we are, Jared. We are 10 <laughs> days. 10 days. On, when, the, when this is released, we are 10 days. Yeah. Until opening kickoff. You're what what are you doing right now? How many days till Michigan? You just you gonna just gonna steal Tom Moore's bit? No, just just half of it. You just you just gonna steal Tom Moore's bit? Just half of it. Man, you guest spot on one episode of the morning scoop, and you're Mr. Ten days till this and 30, 40, whatever days till this, and like you're just like mini Tom Moore over there. Kyle, we have a lot to get to today. Um, this is normally where I tell you like what the core premise of today's show is going to be, but like there's just been so much. There's just been so much, and I, I think we just have to sort of take some time and and get into some camp news, slow down a tad, and and just there's so much happened this week. 
Uh, we have, so we have just kind of a bunch of news items we're going to talk about. I don't know if we have like other than this just being like a a, fo- a fall football camp update. I don't necessarily know if we have like a core theme to this show, but a lot of news, just a lot of news. Yeah, lo- lots of it, lots of it. Um, so I, w- I want to go ahead and just start with uh, some recruiting news. Let's let's okay. Let's start and let's start and stop with the <laughs> recruiting news. I have just one announcement here. First commitment for the twenty twenty three recruiting class goes to tight end Ty Lockwood. Um, this is one of the best tight ends for the twenty twenty three class, and he is out of Independence high school in Tennessee. Yeah. Huge pickup for Ohio state. I think between what, what we've seen out of some of the tight ends who they weren't necessarily expecting to have great years this year, but are getting really good camps out of like Cade Stover and Joe Royer, Jeremy Ruckert sort of unexpectedly coming back. And then now you get Ty Lockwood in the 2023 class. You kind of, start to see why there was a, there was a decommitment out of the 2022 class and and why maybe Ohio State isn't looking to backfill that spot right now and it's it's becoming sort of real easy to see maybe what went behind the decision making there uh with with a little bit more a little bit more hindsight mm-hmm. yeah and it- can you believe it, Jared? It's been it's been pretty much about a month since the last commitment. So I know there there's a few things going around. I won't say too much about it because it is behind paywall there. But there was a lot of talks about um, uh, oh is is um how is Ohio State starting to fall behind in the in the recruiting in the recruiting trail here? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Ohio State be fine. The twenty twenty three class has fallen apart. But through good news, through good news, actually, um, excuse me, not 2023, 2022 class, the 2022 class has started to fall apart. But like I said, through through mostly good news, um, yours, for example, joining reclassifying into the 2021 class as an example. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not too worried about it. Um, and I'm not too worried about the fact that this is their first commitment out of the 2023 class. More are coming. More are coming. And if mm-hmm. you were paying attention earlier, you might know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, well, you'll be surprised along with everyone else. Yep. But speaking of quarterbacks, we'll go right into that here, Jared. Oh, CJ just, Stroud. Just real quick, it's a really good Ohio class for 2023. Yeah. CJ Stroud named QB1, QB1 for week one against Minnesota. Yeah, that's it, though. Ryan Day just said Minnesota. That's all I said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. May, maybe we're in a four quarterback rotation. And just everyone gets to play every fourth game. <laughs> Possibility of that, Kyle, go. And I, I, I think the, I think the biggest thing came out here wasn't so much Ignored that CJ CJ Str- Stroud was was named the starter. It was more that people had more questions about like, hey, who's who's the backup? Who's QB two? Yeah, I, feel, I do feel like that was maybe. Ryan Day comes out and says, hey, everyone, CJ Stroud is quarterback one. And everyone just sort of says, yeah, we we figured mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't a huge surprise. I mean, only one Ohio State quarterback is just like currently bettable for the Heisman Trophy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, we were going through the pick six previews a few episodes back, and I think their guide had him like on the Big Ten. Was it like second team? Was it like all Big Ten second team or third team as as the quarterback? So, yeah, not not a huge surprise. But as Kyle said, the conversation now becomes and kind of has been for a few weeks now. Who's quarterback too? Because everything I'm hearing. It might not be who we thought it would be at the beginning of like, say spring camp. Ewers is not, he's, he's fresh in the building. We're not talking about Ewers and, you know, Jack Miller was the guy who you sort of thought was going to be quarterback two, who a lot of people thought was going to be quarterback one, but we're forgetting about Kyle McCord, who 
if memory serves, I believe is now that Quinn Ewers has officially committed to Ohio State. I believe the third highest highest rated quarterback to ever commit to Ohio State. Kyle McCord is the third highest quarterback, highly rated quarterback to ever. Of course, we're talking about computer rankings, so this goes back to about the year 2000. But the third highest ranked quarterback to ever commit to Ohio State. And we're kind of just forgetting about Kyle McCord. Um, but I, I, I think Kyle McCord's going to win QB too. Dude has an elite arm, an absolute elite arm. He w- came in during the spring, so he has a decided advantage over Ewers in that. I think that we see Ewers, or excuse me, I think we see McCord. I think he's the first quarterback in. If if there's a blowout, if God forbid anything happens to CJ Stroud, I I think it's going to be McCord. Yeah, no, I I agree. I th- I think when it's all said and done, I think I think it is McCord who will get the uh, the QB two uh, role. So the thing you have to start worrying about, not with just Jack Miller, but you know, with all of this talent in the room, you do have to, at a certain point, have to start worrying about transfers. Again, that's not limited. That's not limited to Miller. Um, what I would be surprised to see is anything happen imminently. I, I think there's just no advantage to transferring right now because you'd basically. Like the only advantage to it is that you start, you could like sort of start quote unquote shopping now. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I think to me, to me, I, I don't know. I think Burrow did it best. Go into the spring, do your thing, transfer after the spring, especially if, especially if you don't know where you're going or if you think where you're going is going to be a bit of a, a, a step down, or maybe if you're trying to prove something, you go into the spring camp, you do the best possible spring camp you can do with some of the best coaches in the country. And then you transfer. You let other programs see what they have or what they don't have. You wait until the market gets a little bit hot at the end of the spring camps. Then you transfer. To me, I think Joe Burrow did it perfect. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Um, don't really like to hear on this show. We don't really like to talk about transfers, but I think this is pretty much imminent, imminent that this, a transfer will happen. I, I think it's certain. I don't think it's imminent. Um, but. And yeah, we don't normally like to talk about transfers, but quarterbacks just a different beast because the guys transfer much sooner and it's just there. There's only one. There's only one. So it's just, it's just a different beast altogether. Yep. What is for certain is the captains captains were named uh, just this weekend here. We have on the offensive side, we have Dare Munford, Chris Olave and Cameron Bob. And then yep. on the defensive side, we have Haskell Garrett, Taraja Mitchell and Zach Harrison. So uh, just just going to point out the elephant standing in the room, Cameron Bob, uh, you know, certainly for playing the. Who's not like the others, it's the guy who's not seen the field a ton, um, not not to any real fault of his own. He's he came out of high school incredibly highly ranked, but has had a lot of knee issues and the knee issues keep compounding into more knee issues. And he's just, it's not a career that's gone the way anyone most, mostly Cameron Bob thought it was going to go. But I think this says a lot about who he is as a person and how the other players and the coaching staff feel about him. I think it says a lot. Yeah. Especially the players. I mean, the captains are picked by the players. So that says that says a lot about him. Uh, you, you, you know, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 you look at this 
offense. So like if we if the goal here was to do three and three, right? That that's how it shook out. And maybe they planned it that way. Maybe they didn't. But if the plan was to go three and three, three offense, three defense. Think about all the guys who aren't Bob. Who didn't get this like. If we had maybe. predicted the captains, you probably maybe. would have predicted Jeremy Rucker. Yep. If we were predicting the cap captains, uh, Nicholas Petit, NPF, I think, is is on that list of guys who I, I think you could have very well predicted. Uh, let's not let's not forget Garrett Wilson, Garrett mm -hmm. Wilson, absolutely a guy like if I told you, Kyle, uh, the. It's going to be an offensive lineman and two wide receivers. You probably would have said, oh, that makes sense. But you probably would have assumed the other one was Garrett Wilson. Yeah. Um, another one, too. Maybe. Maybe Master Teague. Maybe Master Teague. Um, yeah, it's just. The, the ones that really stick out to me would be either NPF, Garrett Wilson yep. or Jeremy Ruckert. Yep. Um, I think if there was a second team of captains, Ohio State would have a great second team of captains. Yeah. On the defensive <laughs> side, as Kyle said, Haskell Garrett, which uh, that that's a guy Kyle and I love. We absolutely love. Um, <laughs> we've been asked the question, hey, is Ohio State going to do the, the, the zero jersey again this year? And if so, who? And Kyle and I's answer, we've been asked that a couple times, is just it's been Haskell Garrett. Who's going to get that zero number? I think it's going to be Haskell Garrett. If they do it again this year, I, I think I think that's the guy. And so that's maybe of all of them. That's the least surprising for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Taraja Mitchell, Zach Harrison. Um, neither of those are, are a huge surprise to me. Uh, especially since the defense uh, has gone through more of a cycle than the offense. You had a lot of returning talent on the offense, um, a lot of replacement talent on the defensive side. Uh, so I don't necessarily think this was as competitive a, a, a race on the defensive side as it was on the offensive side. I think you certainly could have seen maybe seven Thanks. banks as Kyle almost beat me to, or maybe because of the lay, he did beat me to uh, Josh Proctor, I think uh, could have also been a great selection here, but between yeah, Garrett Mitchell Harrison, all three of them, I think are going to be starters. All three of them leaders on the team. Um, there's two seniors, uh, junior, this, this trio makes a lot of sense. Yep. Yes, it does. Speaking of trios, we have a trio of black stripes from this from this week. I was expecting Kyle. Kyle. expecting a little Kyle. bit more, but we only only had three black stripes this week, Jared. And they are Man, killing the transition game. This, this they, they are um, offensive lineman Donovan Jackson, defensive back Jordan Hancock and safety Jansen Dunn. Yeah, huge. Uh, absolutely huge. <laughs> Sun Card says, I wasn't prepared for no hats, Kyle. <laughs> Sun Card wants you to wear a hat. I can get a hat. And I got hey, a hat hey, right hey, next hey. to me. You want me to he's, put on a hat not, here, Sun Card? He's I'll not put it in on. charge of you. In fact, hold on. <laughs> yeah, um, as Jared's doing that, yeah, really, really surprised for how few black stripes we've seen compared to years past. But maybe as we've mentioned, a, um, number of episodes even last week to maybe Ryan days um, pulling back on really just giving out those, um, those uh, blacks were removing those black stripes as frequent as we've seen in previous years too. So may maybe that's beginning to be seem more and more true. Yeah. I mean, we, we lost three last episode, uh, lose Four. three last episode. Hmm? We did four. We did four. We did four. OK, I'm going to trust you Four last episode three. This episode, you know, we, we got a we got 10 more days until Minnesota. Um, I, I think it's it's absolutely possible that 
we have another real fruitful week, maybe another three or four go down the tube. And we we might we might be rolling here. We we might be in good position to, like I said, maybe maybe, maybe we get five. It's that last mm. week, man. It's that last week before game prep. Maybe we get five. Yeah, I know I'm getting crazy. Maybe we get five this week. Mm. That would be nice. Now the question would be: Will be will will Ewers be one of them? No. No, I don't think so. I think had had he been able to. I, I <laughs> sun card, you're silly. Um, had he been able to um, attend the latest camp? I'm not used to having a build hat on. I keep hitting my microphone. Um, we had the latest uh, scrimmage and he was not able to uh, to not able to make it for reasons uh, not health related. And. Had he been able to make that camp and had he been able to show out, not that camp, that scrimmage, and had he been able to show out at that scrimmage, then maybe, maybe that's a thing that could have happened. But um, that that's not being able to make that scrimmage is probably a bit of a setback in that. But he'll be fine, I'm sure. Mm, yep. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's see. Moving on here in other news. Um, one, one of the things we talk about that's always been a favorite thing to talk about the past few years here is the bullet position. Yeah. Um, starting, to, starting to see some more names come out about potentially who's going to be starting. We're starting to see um, the first teams kind of a line and who's who's going to be on that first team who's going to be the starters one thing that we're just not quite sure yet is this linebacker in bullet position um i don't know what, what do you think do you think that the bullet position is real i guess yeah, yeah i do um uh, i think you just have to have the right guys to play it and i think on the roster right now they have a few right guys who can play it um mm-hmm. You kind of started to see this play out for Ohio State. Uh, I, I think in many ways, this is what uh, Pete Warner was doing the past couple of years. This is what Darren Lee did. Uh, this is what Jerome Baker did, uh, even if they weren't necessarily calling it the the bullet position back then. That's kind of what they were doing there. Th- this guy, this position was basically once a free safety or excuse me, a strong safety it was essentially once a strong safety. It was the safety. It was the Troy Polamalu type of guy who would come up into the box and, and sometimes go man up against the tight end and sometimes help in run support and do all of those things. So essentially what you're having in today's defense is instead of bringing the safety up into the box, you're taking one of the linebackers and maybe have them drift out of the box. And that frees you up to not take away from your defensive backs to bring them up into run support, but rather to take from your linebackers and pull someone back out into pass support because offenses have changed. Football has changed. We are doing more and more spreads. We're doing more and more passing. The game has evolved and the the offenses have evolved and the defenses have to evolve with it. So essentially, like I said, what you're doing is instead of robbing from the defensive backs to bring into run support, you're robbing from the linebackers to pull out into pass support. That's really all it is, is essentially an old school strong safety who just happens to be subbing in for a linebacker instead of walking up into the box from the safety position. It's essentially all it is. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Sun card um, at didn't the Buccaneers run like a four two five defense. Yeah, I'm not even sure how this falls into that, because like it's almost like a four two four plus one. Because <laughs> like what what is the bullet? He's by definition a hybrid player. You know, last week's episode we talked about how. What do you do with a guy like Jeremy Ruckert? Because he creates matchup problems, right? Jeremy Ruckert might be a wide receiver some plays and might be a defensive, or excuse me, a um, 
a wide receiver, some plays tight ends and other plays, and you don't necessarily know what he's doing and it creates matchup issues for the defense. Well, one of the ways you combat having a guy like Jeremy Ruckert on the offense is having a dedicated bullet like player on the defense. Because, hey, if the offense is going to have a hybrid player that can play a bunch of different positions, the defense needs one, too. It's sort of that way of having position flexibility without substituting, which, again, yeah. if we're talking about running quick or no huddle. No substitution packages, that's, excuse me, essentially what you have to do. So, Kyle, I think that brings us into the question of, like, who is going to be that bullet position for Ohio State? And I think what we're going to have to have to do on the second half of this show, Kyle, is maybe jump into a bit of a, a maybe our final depth chart projection. I think is what we're going to do on the second half of this show. Um, yeah, he kind of went off into the sunset on that ramp on that rant. <laughs> Um, and one of the things we, we seriously need to look at, uh, when we jump into the second half of the show, Kyle, a thing we're going to have to figure out is, did they actually reshuffle the offensive line? Like was being talked about a couple of weeks ago. Like Mm -hmm. we made the centerpiece of our show a couple of weeks ago. So I think Kyle, we're going to have to do a quick, I think we're gonna have to do a quick re-updating of the depth chart yep. on the second half of this show. So I think that's what we're going to do when we come back. But first, Kyle, I think we need to do some ads. And I have to lose this hat because it is freaking hot down here. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm going to read first and then I'll get rid of the hat. How about that? All right, do it. All right, Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is an... I already, I already did the whole thing. They're, they're fair trade certified and USDA organic, um, hand roasted and roast to order let's talk about some of the coffees um let's see uh let's talk about the loki this is the lightest roast that they have um this is a uh wet process blend uh it's higher in caffeine than you might expect from a lighter roast but uh it has real low acidity very rich tasting uh it's a very fragrant citrusy sort of coffee um, and again, that's the Loki. That's their medium light roast. If you're looking for something like that, but a tad bit darker, this is a medium dark roast. Uh, then we're going to have to go with the Thor. Uh, it's like it's thunder and it's lightning and it's 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 Thor. What, what else do you want? Right. Uh, and then if you want that, but maybe even a bit darker then I invite you to check out their father, Odin. Um, it's 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 the Nordic trio of coffees. What more can you ask for? Am, am I am I am I right? So uh, those are three amazing coffees you can check out. Uh, They have all sorts of dark coffees and medium roast coffees and flavored coffees and including their entire uh, murder line of coffees. It has stuff like red velvet and and blueberry crumble and a bunch of other cool stuff. But you can figure all of that out for yourself just by visiting ironbeancoffee.com. Kyle, that's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, Med Canadian, for those who don't know, have a food truck. Yes. Not only do they sell great seasonings over at the MedCanadianBBQ.com, but they also have a great um, food truck that they have rolling around all Ohio. Um, Be sure to check out his social medias, Facebook, Twitter, to find out where he and his uh, food truck are heading to like to say in the Northwest North Ohio area, but maybe you hit them up and convince them maybe to come to Columbus one of these times. And if enough of you, enough of you come by, um, maybe hope, maybe he'll come by to, uh, to come to Columbus though. But if you're interested in getting some great food from the Met Canadian, check out his social media to find out where he and his food truck are heading to next. If you're one of those like me that can't, that don't live close enough to Ohio to catch his food truck, you can always go over to the website to get some of that fantastic seasoning and use that promo code SLUCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Kenny Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. I think that's like the second time, the second time I've ever like left my chair during a show. 
So <laughs> very mobile this episode. All right, here we go. Um going to talk about possible starting lineup. Yeah, let's yeah, I think the last time we did a depth chart update, we made it the centerpiece of the show. We made it a whole episode and we don't have near that amount of time. So we, we're, we're not going to be able to go all over all of these in great detail. So. The quarterback, for example, we know it's CJ Stroud. That's been made official. Um, yep. I've told you who I think quarterback two is. Yep. What do you think? Yeah, let us let us know. Hit us up on Twitter. No, I'm asking you, Kyle. No. Oh. <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. You just said it. Okay, so you agree with me. <laughs> or are you refusing to answer? I don't know what you're trying to say to me right now. You said the name already. When you were asking, you you said, hey, Kyle. Ah, wow. You really expected me to get that? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think it's Kyle McCord uh, from everything that I'm reading and seeing here. I think I think it's Kyle McCord for that number two. Uh, job there also also uh tight end jeremy ruckert no surprise um wide receivers your your x and z wilson and olave mm-hmm. I, I think those are pretty your um without question your your starters there and then if you want to go to the slobs we've talked about oh, the slobs we're, we're, we have a, this is a three wide receiver offense okay so you're going to have to give me your slot wide receiver as well. Your, your wide receiver. Y, your slot, whatever you want to call him. Oof. Smith Ninjemba, I, I think is, is yeah, the leader I, in the clubhouse on that one. I, in fact, I think he's, last, I think he's got it. These, these last two weeks I've been hearing just again, great things from him that he like, whenever the ball is thrown to him, that ball is being caught yeah. circus, circus catches. It, it sounds like that. He's having a great fall camp here. So yeah, I, I can put I can put um uh Jackson Jackson Smith Ninjigba in that position there. Uh yeah, and for if we're gonna do a quick two deep, which I think is necessary for the wide receiver, uh I think Marvin Harrison's backing up Olave. I think Fleming is backing up Wilson, and I think Omeka and Buka and and Jackson Smith and Jimba are probably going to um do a pretty a pretty decent share in that slot as well. Yep. Um, before, well, we mentioned it before here. Uh, well, I think it was a few weeks ago when we started. When if I can talk, apologize. <laughs> when fall camp started, uh, it was always, "Hey, who's going to get that first snap? Who's going to get that first team snap?" Well, I, I think I think it's going to be um, Williams. I think Williams is going to be your starting running back for Minnesota. Mayan Williams, I think so, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, w- I wouldn't shock me, though, that when it's all said and done by the end of the year, the running back who gets the most carries is Travion Henderson. Yes. Yep. I think that's the guy who gets the most carries by the end of the year. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things people get, get he's exciting. And like, I know I was, oh, we get excited about the new shiny freshman. Well, he's he's real shiny. <laughs> like, this is not this is not hype. This is not the hype train going too far. One of my favorite things, Tony, I don't know if you're listening to the show or not. I know you're very busy this time of year. But Tony Gerdeman, one of my favorite things he ever wrote, he was still over at the Ozone. And he wrote this clearly, clearly sarcastic piece about uh, the hype going too far on J.K. Dobbins, and it was clearly, clearly a joke. Like it was was a straight up Onion article just on the ozone, right? And people were pissed at him for years over that. It's one of my favorite things he ever did. But yeah, this is another case with Henderson of the hype being deserved. And I agree with Kyle. Mayan Williams, I think, is the day one starter. But don't be surprised if most of the carries, like, as I, I think, end up going to Henderson. Yep. And then oh, the slobs. The slobs. We, we talked about like, we, we named one of our episodes the slob shuffle. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, they were playing with this idea. Hey, what happens if we move NPF to left tackle? We bump Munford into left guard. We let Dwan Jones take over at right tackle to fill in for NPF. 
you know, they already. So it's essentially a four tackle lineup because we already we, we're already really used to the idea of Paris Johnson, who is a tackle by trade, essentially at right guard. And then in the middle, you have Harry Miller. Like I put the offensive lineman in the thumbnail. Did our numbers suffer as a result of me doing that? Maybe. Because only I get that excited about offensive linemen. So, Kyle, the question we now have to ask ourselves, has this experiment moved its way into production? Yes, I, I, I really think so. Harry Miller's. I have read so many great things about him having a really great fall camp. Um, it really shows a lot from Munford and Paris Johnson. Um, really, I don't want to say that they're that they're giving away their positions that they normally play for others to play in, but it, they're being very, um, um, I need to help me out here. They're, they're uh, not selfish. They're not selfish. Generous. They're very generous. Sure. Yeah. Um, um, team players. Cooperative. Yes, team, there you go. Okay. Um, to get, to, to get the, the best 11 players on the field and Five of them got to be um, offensive linemen here. I, I really think, I think, really think you're going to see Petit Faria at your left tackle, Munford left guard, Miller center, Paris Johnson right guard, and Dewan Jones out in the right tackle. And just, just thinking about that too, Paris Johnson and Dewan Jones, yeah, out yeah. on your right side, man. Dude, the left side. You have two all-American caliber left tackles. It's just one of them's playing left guard on the left side of the offensive line. I know we all like to complain about the Ohio State's ability to recruit offensive linemen, and we don't have time to get into the too deep right now. Like we just don't have the time to go too deep in the depth chart right now. I love their too deep. They have amazing talent. At each position, ready to fill in. You want to get another hype? You want to get another hype um, train going here, Jared? Are we on Twitch now? <laughs> uh, best offensive lineman ever at Ohio State? Don't. Don't start with the Orlando Pace stuff. Don't start it. I won't do it. Well, line team. like. Oh, as a unit. Yeah, as a unit, yes. They have the potential. Like, but still to me, like the unit that was Orlando Pace and Corey Stringer is still number one to me. Um but we'll have that conversation at the end of the year. How about that? All right. All right, let's move to the defensive side. Uh a lot of a lot of people to replace from last year. Uh, but what's what's pretty set in stone there garrett and harry and harrison and um i could even put um tyreek smith in there too i think those are pretty um solidified there i know we like to talk about the the shiny freshman as well like we did with um trivion henderson so i think we'll see a lot of our two shiny freshman uh defensive ends but your your starters i think it's got to be like Harrison and Garrett and Smith. Harrison, Garrett, Smith, but we, we need a second defensive tackle. Yes, and I probably said just tackle. because... Garrett, Garrett's our three tech. I think Vincent is the nose tackle. Yeah, I, I, can, I can see Vincent being that nose tackle there. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, that's, I think that's the play. Um, like I said, uh, Vincent at nose tackle. Um, I think you have uh, Cage and Jackson, who uh, Jackson probably more than nose tackle. Uh, Cage is probably a, a nose tackle as well. Um, lo lots of lots of quality hype around Ty Hamilton this year. He's a true sophomore. Um, you, you could see him come in. Maybe as Haskell Garrett's number two. Uh, maybe he's not quite there yet. That really sort of depends upon how guys like Cage and Jackson are doing right now. 
Uh, but keep a t- uh, keep an eye out for Ty Hamilton. Um, yeah, I, but I, I think Ohio State's in good position for at the defensive tackle, and they're in amazing position at the D end. I mean, when you ask yourself, yeah, I mean it's it's insane. Harrison Smith are your starters, but how how much can you keep Sawyer, Jean Baptiste, Noah Potter, and oh by the way. <laughs> JT to Emolau. Yeah. How, how, how much can you keep them on the bench? It's the, the defensive line is insane right now, especially the defensive ends, but it's just insane right now. It is. Yeah. Probably one of the most frequently asked questions here because of how inconsistent this group has been over the past number of years is your linebackers here. Uh, we mentioned, um, um, Mitchell at the top of the show here. I think he's he solidified himself as one of the linebackers there. Uh, heard also great things about Cody Simon as well. Uh, a lot of praise from um, fellow um, Buckeye Scoop um, members uh, regarding Cody Simon. Some comparing him to a former All American linebacker, AJ Hawk. Um. I I, th- I think those are probably your two. If you're going with that, adding in a bullet position, I think those are your two main linebackers. Yeah, if, if we're seriously talking about a two linebacker team, I, I think that I think it, I do think it's Mitchell. I agree with Kyle. I think it's Mitchell and I think it's Simon. Uh, they have a lot of great options behind those guys, and they have a lot of great options to to put into the bullet position. Um, I think some of your first ins will be, uh, probably Eichenberg and Chambers, I, I think might be for going too deep. Those might be your guys. Um, but you know, the depth chart starts to look real sexy once you, you only have to fill two positions, but you're also mm-hmm. losing some of those linebackers to the bullet, uh, cause you're sort of pulling both from the safeties and the linebackers to fill in the bullet position. So, Kyle, speaking of the bullet position, who are you liking? Oh, I, I think it's too early. I really do, but I don't know. Maybe maybe you put in um, Ransom there. Maybe, uh, man, it's it's tough. Maybe, maybe still Court Williams stuff. Maybe you can talk about Court Williams or Lason, uh Ransom as well, too. Lathan Ransom, apologize. Yeah, um, I agree with Ransom 100%. Um, I think you could also look at Hickman. I think you can also look at Court Williams. I'm kind of thinking Ransom and Hickman is kind of where I'm at right now with that bullet position is is sort of a split of sorts between those two. Like when the first depth chart comes out, I probably expect it to say Ransom or Hickman. It's kind of what I'm expecting the depth chart to say. You get one of those ors in there. That Court Williams? You know, I maybe. I don't know. Um, I think Court Williams has had a great camp. I think a lot of guys have had a great camp. Um, I don't want to rule out Court Williams. Um, it's just that I forced myself to pick two. And I, those are the two I'm going with. Um, if you, If you want to stick with Court Williams, I'm not going to try and uh, formulate some sort of argument as to why you're wrong because you might not be. <laughs> All right. Um, safeties here. Josh Proctor is your free safety. Yeah. That's your, that's, that's as solid as that can be there. Now the strong safety here, this, this is something that we talked about um, a few episodes ago. I think, I think two or three episodes ago, we were talking about fixing the pass defense here. So the cover safety there, or the strong safety, Craig Young, uh, Jansen Dunn, who just who just got his black stripe to remove. Um, maybe Court Williams could yeah. maybe see there too. Or who, who, who do you think, Jared? I, I kind of like if we're talking about getting court, like if we're doing best 11, which is what they're talking about doing. I have to start thinking, you know, does Court Williams fit better as that strong safety as opposed to, you know, it, it also probably just depends upon what defense you're playing. 
because you might shift guys like Minnesota is going to be like a real run heavy team, right? Really good running back, really good offensive line. So maybe you're going to shift a tad bit heavier. So maybe at that bullet position, use a guy like Craig Young, who is like recruited as a linebacker, right? So maybe use Craig Young or maybe you use a slightly bigger um, Court Williams at the bullet position. And then you have like a you know, maybe then you have Ransom or Hickman play more of the safety position. Um, but when you play a team that's a faster team, a pass happier team, then you maybe shift a bit lighter. And at that point, you might go Jansen done as a strong safety and then put one of your lighter guys, a Hickman, a ransom as your bullet. See what I mean? I think that's that's kind of the brilliance of having this strong safety meets bullet position. You know, you could instead of having a strong safety, you have a nickel. Or instead of having a bullet, you have a nickel. And or maybe the bullet is the nickel. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just kind of a wild card slot. And I think that's a huge advantage for Ohio State. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So against a run heavier team, like I said, you could see them go a bit heavier, which I think maybe leans into your argument. If we're talking about a week one depth chart, that maybe Court Williams is the bullet because of like Hickman. Court Williams. Ransom, he's probably maybe the most linebackerish of them all. But then you have Craig Young, who's probably the most linebackerish of those four. It yeah. gives you flexibility. Yep. Okay. And then your corners here, your your two corners. Uh, the, you got you got to stick with seven banks. Yeah. On the outside CB1, there, seven banks. And change his name to one. Seven. Your name. Your your name is now one because you're CB one. You are CB one, and then the other one. Oh boy, that's tough. I mean, you got yeah, you got Cameron Brown, you got Ryan Watts, you got Legend Calvos. I don't know. Like that one's going to be tough. I, I don't know. Maybe 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 I'll stick with um. Maybe I'll just stick with um, with Calvos. I guess I I really don't know. I could see any of those three being that, that I, CB2 and rotating that. I think a lot of it depends upon, and we don't, we've heard a lot of positive things. We've heard a lot of good things. How much of that is true and how much of that is stuff that Ohio State is intentionally leaking to the midi media about Cameron Brown's health, right? Because I think if Cameron Brown is 100%, if it, let's just say theoretically, he he hurts in October. He hurts his Achilles. Like he he messed up his Achilles real bad. That quarterback, that's devastating. But if he's a hundred percent week one, I think he's the starting cornerback. I think he's CB two. But I think that's a huge if. That's a huge if. Less than a year removed from a ruptured Achilles, are you a hundred percent? Not. Not 85, not 80, not 90. Are you 100%? If he is 100%, I think he's the starter, but I think that's a huge if. Yeah. Um, so I think Cam Brown eventually becomes the starting safety. I think he eventually becomes CB2. I just don't know if that's going to be the case for Minnesota. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but I think the three names you mentioned, Cavazos, Watts, Brown, I think those are the... I think those are the three leading names to keep an eye on. Um, and I would say just tossing this out there. Jordan Hancock just lost his stripe. Denzel Burke lost his stripe. Jansen Dunn lost his stripe. You know, Jansen's a, you know, probably more of a. I don't think he's not going to be starting CB2, but nickel or safety sure uh, especially this early on but the ohio state has done themselves a lot of favors with recruiting recently 
um, in the defensive back room. And I know we all saw what the defense looked like last year and we're all nervous. And I'm not saying it's going to be perfect right away. But I think Ohio State's going to have a renaissance in pass defense this year. Between added talent in the defensive back room and added talent in the quarterback rushing department, Ohio State's going to have a defensive renaissance this year. Yes, absolutely. All right. Um, anything else, Jared? Anything uh, else keep, we want to keep an eye out for Demario McCall, who's been doing great things at corner. Keep an eye out for G. Scott Jr., uh, who like he's kind of a tight end, kind of a wide receiver. So we don't necessarily know what he's doing. I think he needs to have his name said because I think they're going to get him on the field. Um, Michael Hall Jr. in a I think there's opportunity in the defensive tackle room. I think Ohio State has a dedicated starting pair at defensive tackle. But I think that there's opportunity to enter the two deep. And again, true freshman. Michael Hall Jr., maybe not by week one, but eventually is a guy that could work himself into the rotation as the season goes on. Um, yeah, just just some names we had mentioned that I felt like needed to be said out loud. That's all. I, now all I right. think I'm done. All right, cool. All right, um, let's go and answer some Ask Snoopcast questions here. Uh, let's see. Um, not going to uh, answer any Tim Tebow questions. I got a <laughs> few here. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, Duncan says, um, something we haven't covered with this because it's still relatively new. Not much has come out of this though, but Duncan asks Duncan from the discord. That is, is the, is a big 10 ACC pack Alliance, um, how how Alabama gets out of coming to Columbus? It's possible. Um, Ohio State had a home and home scheduled with, um, I think this was, was it Tennessee or was it Georgia? Um, and then it ended up getting canceled because they had announced a Pac-12 scheduling agreement. And of course, the Pac-12 scheduling That's agreement Tennessee. got got burnt to a crisp because the Big Ten expanded and the Pac-12 expanded and they both wanted to do nine conference games. So it was sort of a thing that canceled a thing that canceled a thing. That, that was all, that was also, I believe, when Hase had a home and home with UNC, which I'm a little disappointed could have gone and seen the Buckeyes here in Chapel Hill. But yeah, and Kyle, we completely it was in our notes. We why did we completely skip over it? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, um, the athletics Nicole, Nicole Auerbach. Uh, reported that the Big Ten, Pac-12, ACC could announce an alliance between the three conferences as early as next week, which well, uh, if we update, that would be this week uh, for, for us in these modern times. So, so I mean, what I mean this, we don't know what this means. Alliance could just mean just an agreement like, hey, it could be just like what the ACC has with with Notre Dame. Hey. Let's play two games every yeah. year with this conference. Hey, let's play two games with this other conference is every this, year too. Is this just the football equivalent of the Big Ten ACC Challenge? Yeah. Is that all this is? I've, I think so. I have heard that it's more than a scheduling agreement. That's what I've heard. It's more than a scheduling agreement. Um, it might be a, just a political alliance. And what does political alliance mean? Political alliance means that they, as a, as three, which is a majority of the power five are going to vote down the playoff expansion, the 12 team playoff expansion. These three conferences, basically, since if they're politically aligned and voting as a group now can make all the decisions. So maybe it's just nothing more than a political alliance. Maybe it's a scheduling agreement. Um, quite frankly, I think that they just need to. The Pac-12 is dead. Kill it. Kill it. I'm, I'm done. Kyle and I talked about the big two last week. Two power conferences. The SEC and the Big Ten. Kill the Pac-12. 
The Big 12 is already dead. Screw them. Maybe, you know, pick at the bones, pick at the bones. Sure, but they're already dead. Raid the ACC and let's just get this over with. Let's get it over with. This is the direction we're heading Two 24 team conferences. It's entirely possible. Yep. And I. I wonder. I wonder if this is the Big Ten trying to play nice, not wanting to look like the conference that raids other conferences again and not wanting to do this and maybe, God forbid, trying to preserve the Rose Bowl. Lord knows we've made so many sacrifices to preserve a Rose Bowl out in Pasadena, California. Why we make so many sacrifices for a Rose Bowl that does nothing for the economy of the Midwest, I don't know. You realize that the big, when they put together the the, the current playoff structure, that it was discussed to use neutral sites, neutral sites for, for the playoff games. And the Big Ten said, no, use the bowl games. That's how they use their political power. Why? Because of the Rose Bowl. Let the Rose Bowl die. I, I don't hold any sanctity. I don't hold any reverence for the Rose Bowl. I see it as a hindrance of doing the things that actually make sense. I am all for tradition unless tradition gets in the way of common sense, which is what the Rose Bowl has become to me. It's a hindrance towards doing the correct things. And I swear to God, if we're not stealing USC and Oregon and Washington and Colorado and any other shiny apple from the Pac-12, and if it's because of the goddamn Rose Bowl screwing us again, why aren't there any playoff game? Why aren't there any playoff games in the Midwest, Kyle? Why are they all in California or in SEC country, Kyle? Because it's too cold. Because of the bowl games. Because of the stupid, lousy, antiquated, corrupt bowl games. I'm done with them. Hey, Jared. The Rose Bowl can go itself. I think I found your two minute clip for a preview show. <laughs> I'm, done, I'm done with the Rose Bowl. No reference. No respect. It's. All right, a couple couple more questions here. Maybe this will cool you off, Jared. Uh, Nomad asks us for the for week one on. for week one over under forty five points that Ohio State will drop. I like Minnesota's offense a lot this year. I think Minnesota has a really nice year. I think their defense it just can't hang. We'll get into yeah, that. We, we 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 Kyle, we're getting real close to know your enemy. Um, we're, we're getting close, buddy. We're, we're getting, yeah, real, real we close. are next week. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really excited about it. Um, but Minnesota's defense is not going to be able to hang with Ohio state's offense period over, over, over 45 points. Minnesota's going right. to score some points. They have a really seniored, talented offense against a, Defense from Ohio State is going to have a lot of new kids on the field. Minnesota is going to score some points. We're probably going to have to come on here um, in our first bounce back and tell everyone, hey, the, the defense didn't look great, but it's it's going to be OK. That's a conversation we're probably going to have to have with you guys. I'm just letting you know right now. But yep. Minnesota yep. has a great offensive line and a great running back. And I think that they have a lot to build towards, but their defense just is not going to be able to hang with Ohio State. Speaking of Minnesota here, they announced that they are wearing a black alternate uniform against Ohio State in week one. And Kyle, you already know why this is, right? Because they're trying to pull a what Iowa and Purdue did to Ohio State a number of years ago. But, you know, the last team that were black against Ohio State, they lost 52 to three. OK, but Kyle, you're forgetting to there. That's a triple factor here. All black uniforms, road game, night game, Big Ten West. So it was actually three factors. All blacks, road game, game. Big Ten West, night game. 
that that's the that's the triple quadruple that's the quadruple factor to upsetting Ohio State. That's that's the Iowa Purdue model. And that's what Minnesota Minnesota had three of those things. They just introduced the four, Kyle. They're going for it. They're they're going for the upset special. At least it's not November. <laughs> Be freezing freezing up in Minnesota. There, there's always that. Yes. All right. Um, last question Nomad has. Over or under the number of carries Henderson will have against Minnesota at 10. Over. Yeah, I think over. I think Ohio State's going to run the ball quite a bit to establish that run and going to get going to get Olave and gang wide open for CJ Stroud. <laughs> Ohio State's going to have an elite freshman redshirt but freshman nonetheless quarterback uh, an elite wide receiving core, but their running backs are so deep and their offensive line is going to be so dominant that I don't know if they need any of them. Yeah. All right. And I think that's it. That's all we got in the notes here, Jared. All right, Kyle, that's, that's, that's our episode. Everyone visit the Uh You can find a lot of cool videos, um, videos you can find a lot of cool links to videos there you can also find links to our t-shirt stores kyle and i are both wearing uh stuff you can buy at merch.thesloopcast.com uh, we also have stuff over at 7071.thesloopcast.com that's like just generally ohio merchandise um kyle that's the t-shirt i was wearing last week it was yeah um and there's a bunch of other links there they're they're all active and you can click them uh, you can visit our Patreon store uh, or it's not a store, a Patreon page. Uh, we're always looking for for, for new donors. Um, and uh, Kyle, I don't think we're going to hit our five episode a week goal. Um, uh, that That's not a that's a thing we were hoping for, but it's not going to happen. So we aren't going to be doing five episodes a week this this year. Um I think instead we're going to start doing a Patreon only episode. So if you want that Patreon only episode, you might have to you might have to check us out on Patreon. I think is what we're going to do instead. Um, also, I'm going to be doing like live watch alongs, and that's not necessarily going to be Ohio State games. Just like I'm probably going to pick a game every week and. Um, I'm just going to pick a game every week. Uh, we're going to be doing our sloop picks here soon. We're going to. And I'm not sure what site we're doing it on this year, but we're going to publish a link, an open invite to join our sloop picks this year. Um, it's just, we're just picking games against. We're going to pick seven games every week, pick them against the line, and you can pick them with us. Um, if you want that link, I'm not going to be putting that link out publicly because I don't want a bunch of randos joining. Um, so you're going to have to, at the very least, join the free section, not the paid section, not not Patreon exclusive. Just join the Discord. That's it. Just join the Discord. Um, And I might put the link out on our Patreon page as well and not put it behind the Patreon paywall. So if you just check out our Patreon page, you might be able to find that link. Um, Even like I said, if you're not a Patreon member. Um, And I think think that's all I have. Do you have anything in in Kyle's corner? Uh, Well, it was the uh, (laughs) it was the Minnesota black jersey, but that kind of went into the question from nomad there. So that was kind of my spiel for. So you ruined it. So I did ruin it. Kyle. Um, Kyle. Kyle. I'm waiting for Ohio State black jersey news. Well, we've got no alternative jersey news. No alternate jersey news. No block O news. Come on. Throw us a bone here, Ohio State. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we got nothing They're killing us. <laughs> we got nothing. Uh, normally our guy over at, um, I think, is he with SI now? Sports Illustrated? Um, his, his name is escaping me. He worked for 11 Warriors for a while. He's always the one breaking the Jersey Andrew? news. Andrew. Andrew. Um, Lind. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's, that's him. Yeah, he's always the one breaking the Jersey news. We haven't we haven't seen it yet, though. So I'm not 100 percent sure. Maybe they're not doing one this year or maybe they're doing a really good job keeping it under wraps. I'm not sure. 
I don't know. We have not had any alternative Jersey news from Ohio State this year. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. All right, Kyle. Anything else? Uh, no, that's it. We're, we're we got one more episode of our off season, and then the season begins. What do you guys want out of that next episode? Let us know. Yeah, well, it's it's discord.thesloopcast.com. That is one hundred percent the best way to reach us and to make sure we see it. Yeah. We got one last off season episode and then two week episodes. Do you want us to do like a national preview? Do you want us to get like one last recruiting special in before we get completely sucked into football? Um, do you want us to do a national preview, a big 10 preview? Um, like we got one episode left before we just get sort of sucked into the, the week to week game prep and game reaction stuff. We get, we get one more episode. You guys, what do you want from us? Let us know on Twitter, or like I said, the best way to do it is, is on our discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. If you don't know what a discord server is, it's essentially like a private, small private social media. It's kind of a group chat. It's kind of a social media. Um, we use something like Slack or something like that at work. It's very similar to that. Um, just download the Discord app to your phone and join us at sloopcast dot, excuse me, discord dot the sloopcast dot com. Time to end the episode, Kyle. Yep, let's end it. We will catch everybody here next week. Yeah, uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by one of my favorite bands in the Columbus area. They're called Playing to Vapors. Um, they're like a very accessible uh, math rock band. Sometimes math rock bands can be a bit off putting these. This is not the case with these guys. They're uh, very accessible, but also incredibly skilled. I suggest seeing them live. If you ever get the opportunity, once again, it's playing to vapors. So with all of that being said, Kyle, I like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcast. Once again, this is playing to vapors. Speaking of local beer, Kyle, this was excellent, I have to say. It's a Columbus brew. Is that a, a, a feast beer, fast beer? I don't I don't I don't know how to pronounce German stuff. Just think October fest, fest beer. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> but they also spell beer, B-I-E-R. Which which encourages me no to use beer. some sort of no beer. Sure. <laughs> there, there's there's a funny um I think it's like college humor or something. By the way, where, if anyone from Columbus Brew is is, we'd love to have a beer sponsor again. There, there's a funny co college humor out there where they talk about the different countries and say, "All right, how do you pronounce beer? Beer?" And then there's always this one country that pronounces it so off Kyle it's funny I haven't visited college humor in I haven't been to their site it just so happened just to come like it was either I think it was like a in my Twitter feed and I was like oh this seems funny and my gosh I haven't heard I haven't seen anything for college humor in years <laughs> you know when we first start this is this is this is officially old guy talk when we first started going to college humor, it was mostly an image board and not like a not like a fourth image board, Ooh, but it was it was basically like E-bombs world. But they also had pictures and it was borderline raunchy at that time. <laughs> they've they've pivoted since they've pivoted since. All right, Kyle, I think it is. Time for me to break my microphone. You know what? Wait. Oh, boy. It's this YouTube exclusive con. You know what? Screw it. We're holding the mic from here on out, boys. <laughs> All right. Take us away, Jared. <laughs> Once again, I'd like to... <laughs>
We're going to try that one again. I didn't even drink that much today. This is this is all just me being tired. That's all any of this is. Nomad is missing out. I know, right? It's all it's all in the YouTube channel. He'll, he can watch it. All right, I'm going to try this ending again. Once again, I'd like to thank Playing to Vapors for sponsoring. Nope, they didn't sponsor today's episode. They ended today's episode. Um, sponsoring today's episode, however, would be the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based micro roaster. Uh, all of their coffee is fair trade certified, USD organic, and it is not roasted until you order it, ensuring you get the freshest possible coffee. Uh, let's let's take a look at a couple of their coffees. We looked at the uh, what I call the Nordic Trio. Let's take a look at a different one. This one is called the Fear No Evil. Uh, this is some of the highest quality, most floral Arabica beans uh, that they carefully roasted to the brink of flames. Uh, they monitor it with all five of their senses. Um, it feels like cocoa butter. It's smooth. It's smoky, it's exotic, it's rich, and it has maybe the boldest taste that they have. Um, then you can look at the integrity. Uh, it's the mainstay. This is like the flagship mainstay, uh, whatever phrase you want to use. Uh, coffee of the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Um, rich and screaming. Do not go gentle into that dark night. Um, integrity, it's named the integrity because integrity is their core value. They do everything right. Even when no one's looking, uh, even though I, as a podcast ad reader advertise all of those things, but you know that they're actually following through on all of those things. Cause like I said, integrity is at the core of what they do. Uh, it is a dark roasted coffee. And if they say, if you're going to make an espresso, like if you're an espresso head, if that's what you're planning on doing with these beans, they highly recommend that you use the integrity uh, these are organic Peruvian beans, uh, notes of dark chocolate and black cherry. So once again, Iron Bean Coffee Company, um, some of their coffee, some of their more uh, popular coffees are available in K-Cup. There are gift cards available, um, free shipping over $50. And if you sign up for a subscribe and save service, uh, you can also save yourself a few dollars doing that. So you can find those coffees, the Nordic Trio, a bunch of flavored coffees, some medium roast that I didn't even get a chance to get into on this episode. All of that and more over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian has over 13, 13? I think it's 13, 13 seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Not sure what seasoning to go with or you're new into grilling. Check out one of his great um, box sets that he has over at his website. Um, you have the Sweet Heat, which has a little bit of sweet, a little bit of heat seasonings. Four Horsemen, Discord, Two Border, and the Old Fashioned. It's a great, it's a great way to give that extra little kick or sweetness to your meat. Or you can go with the Just Send It. It's, your, it's the most versatile seasoning seasonings that the Mad Canadian has to offer. Your S&P or your salt and pepper uh, blend. Your Sonoran Heat, the Cajun, and the Smoked. You get just a wide variety of seasonings with that. Or why not get each seasoning? Explore. Explore all the great tastes, all the great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at his website. And be sure to use that promo code SLUCAS10 at checkout for 10% off more of your entire order. Mad Kenny Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. <laughs>